Hello everyone, welcome to today's plenary, celebrating 40 years of Main Street. I'm Paul Edmondson, president of the National Trust. 40 years ago, when the Trust founded the Main Street program, no one could have predicted what a great success it would be 40 years later. I'm honored to be part of an organization that helped to build what's become a powerful movement. And now with Main Street America forging its own path as a nonprofit subsidiary of the National Trust, I'm proud that we at the Trust serve as a partner with Main Street in our joint efforts to build stronger communities across the country. Today's plenary is going to be a celebration and recognition of all things Main Street. You'll hear from Patrice Fry, President and CEO of Main Street America, and we'll all get to see the announcement and presentation of this year's Great American Main Street Awards. Following that, we'll be joined by the legendary Mary Means, founder of the original Main Street program and, of course, the recipient of this year's Crown and Shield Award. We'll have an opportunity to hear from Mary about evolution of the Main Street program, followed by presentation of the inaugural Mary Means Leadership Award. Before we get into the program, I want to, of course, take a moment to thank the sponsor of this event, the American Express Foundation. For years, American Express has been a leading supporter of both the National Trust and Main Street, so it's very fitting they partnered with us for this session. We're deeply grateful to American Express for its steadfast commitment to the cause of community-based preservation and development. Tim McClyman, president of the American Express Foundation, is joining us today to provide remarks, and I'm very pleased to turn this over to him now. I hope you enjoy the program. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tim McClyman, and I'm president of the American Express Foundation. Here at American Express, we have been a longtime supporter of the work of the National Trust to build stronger communities and by that stronger mean streets through its mission of historic preservation. I know I do not need to convince this audience of this, but I truly believe it. Main streets are the heart and soul of America. Across the country, forward-looking Americans are revitalizing neighborhoods into places we want to call home. These vibrant, inclusive communities nourish our bodies, support our families, and feed our spirits. And at the heart of each revitalization lies a unique cultural heritage, one that's instricably linked to the historic buildings where people live, work, and play. In 2018, American Express partnered with the National Trust and Main Street America to bring our popular Partners in Preservation campaign to Main Streets. This is a program that over the course of more than a decade awarded $28 million to support 260 historic sites across the United States. The following year, we returned to Main Street, awarding two million in grants to historic sites celebrating the contributions of women in 20 communities around the country. This is work that I and everyone at American Express is proud of. And that is why we are so happy to sponsor today's plenary as we celebrate the 40th anniversary of Main Street America. I'm not gonna say that we live in challenging times because we all know it. But now more than ever, Main Street and the people and businesses that make it special need us in whatever way we can support it and them regularly and safely. Shortly, Patrice Fry, President and CEO of Main Street America, will lead us in a discussion about that very topic and about how Main Streets are supporting and uplifting local communities through the current crisis. So thank you all for the work that you do and please enjoy today's plenary. Well, thanks everyone. Thank you, Paul, for that very warm introduction. Thank you, Tim at American Express. American Express, of course, has been a long-term partner of the National Trust for Historic Preservation. They have also been a great, a great friend to Main Street America, a great friend to small businesses, and we're so pleased that they're making this session possible this morning. Next, if, if you've been uh, watching our social channels or receiving newsletters from us over the summer, you know that we have been very, very deeply engaged in an advocacy effort 
to encourage Congress to support Main Street America communities uh, and specifically Main Street America coordinating programs uh, and, and programs on the ground, the local programs during this very difficult time. Um, I'm gonna say a little bit more about that in a few minutes, but before I do that, I wanna introduce you to a real friend of Main Street America and our advocacy effort, and that is Senator Roger Wicker from Mississippi. Senator Wicker hails from the uh, great town of Tupelo, Mississippi. You might know Tupelo as a Main Street community and moreover as one of our great American Main Street award winner uh, finalists, semi-finalists this, this season. And so we're gonna hear from him very briefly. Hello, I'm U.S. Senator Roger Wicker. I extend my warmest congratulations to the National Main Street Center for 40 years of tremendous work. Your commitment to building stronger communities has made a measurable impact. By focusing on what makes towns great and giving innovators the framework to succeed, you have breathed new life into American communities. I was pleased to learn that a Mississippi town is being recognized this year. Tupelo is known for a lot of things. It's the birthplace of Elvis and an important part of the beautiful Natchez Trace Parkway. It is also a modern city that was the first to get electric power from the Tennessee Valley Authority. It's also where my wife Gail and I have made our home for the past 38 years. This year Tupelo reached a momentous milestone when it turned 150 years old. But the city's history has not been without challenges. Back in 1936, a tornado devastated downtown, leveling nearly 50 blocks of homes and businesses. Residents and businesses were forced to start fresh and rebuild from the ground up. Though there was some early success, in past years, downtown, like other downtowns, struggled to maintain and grow businesses. Tupelo was not marketing its strengths to the world. Building on the Main Street approach, Tupelo's leaders made it a priority to turn around the downtown core. They recruited a team of business owners, restaurateurs, and organizers. They charted a new path for Tupelo together. Now the city is more vibrant than ever before. Tupelo attracts visitors from across the region and even around the world. All because the city has built on things like music, history, and hospitality that made Mississippi great in the first place. But this year, many Main Streets across America are facing yet another challenge. For the first time in our country's history, our economy shut down for the sake of public health. Millions of Americans lost their jobs through no fault of their own. In Congress, we've worked to provide relief. Measures like the Paycheck Protection Program, stimulus payments, and expanded unemployment protections have helped Americans weather the worst effects of the crisis. But these measures are only temporary fixes. The effects I fear may last far beyond this year. I hope our towns will be the economic engines that will bring our nation roaring back to prosperity. We can support the fundamentals of economic growth like creating jobs and investing in infrastructure. I also believe we can give local communities the resources to do what is best for their own recovery. These things will be a priority as Congress considers new rounds of relief. With time, I know that our small towns will persevere through this crisis and we will build back stronger than ever before. Thank you. All right, well, thank you to Senator Wicker for those really inspiring remarks. I did wanna give you a little bit of an update today on our advocacy work. For those of you who have been following it, we've been uh, appealing to Congress for $100 million to support our Main Street America coordinating programs, and of course, by extension, our Main Street programs on the ground. Um, we have had, I, I think, enormous success and support in Congress from this effort, with this effort. Um, unfortunately, you probably know that Congress is at a bit of an impasse this moment. And so um, I think it's, it's easy, unfortunately, to be a bit discouraged in this moment. 
But I want to share with you that ultimately, I am very optimistic that Congress will pa pass a relief package and that we at Main Street America are well positioned to be part of that relief package. So I would ask you, please, please don't lo lose faith in this effort. Please don't lose your energy and momentum. Our continued advocacy is so, so important. If you want to learn more, I'd encourage you to check out our homepage. We're going to be continuing to update you on our progress and let you know what you can be doing to engage your senators or your members, uh, your House members of Congress, uh, to let them know why this work is so so very important. I can think of no better way to motivate ourselves for the work to come than to hear about the transformational stories of our Great American Main Street Award winners uh, and all that they have accomplished. So let's move to that next part of the agenda, the part that I think everybody has been waiting for, which is the announcement of our Great American Main Street Award winners this year. Of course, the GAMS Award is the highest honor we present every year, and it, is, it goes to those that really have demonstrated excellence and comprehensive downtown revitalization. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to announce the first 2020 Great American Main Street Award winner, and that is Kendall Whittier in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Congratulations. A one to watch award winner from last year, Kendall Whittier has seen an incredible turnaround. Since 2013, 36 new businesses have opened and 292 jobs have been created. Their successful revitalization has made it a model for other Tulsa neighborhoods and sparked a citywide Main Street program. A quick note before we move into these videos, I uh, wanna let you know that these were filmed before COVID, which is why you don't see folks wearing masks or social distancing. Kendall Whittier is hip. Kendall Whittier is the place to be. I think a lot of people have realized how much there is to offer over here. When you get into the neighborhood, you feel like you're somewhere special. It took a lot of years of work by a lot of people, but we made it happen. And we made it happen for the betterment of the neighborhood in a way that was organic and really meaningful to the people who call this area home. In the 1970s, this area would have been in a decline. Adult-oriented businesses started popping up. The shop that we're sitting in right now was an adult bookstore back in the day. People inside the store didn't necessarily want to be seen inside the store, so the windows had been boarded up for decades. Nothing on the shelves made the bestseller list, let's put it that way. A lot of the longtime merchants that had been a part of the district in its heyday were starting to move out. So we got to work through the Main Street approach. In 2013, the vacancy rate in Kendall Whittier was 65%, and today it's at 0%. You can see a lot of new businesses, so I feel like there's a lot of foot traffic in the area. It looks like whoever comes and does business in here, they grow. Now we get to just keep maintaining it and also expanding who we can help and how we can bring in more businesses. The events probably were the foundation of at least trying to change the attitudes about what this area had been. We focused on bringing people to the area on a more frequent basis, and then after they left the event, they could patronize businesses. It's been a wonderful mix of events that's really contributed to the vitality of, of this neighborhood. We have a farmer's market starting next month. We've done brewery crawls. There's the monthly art walk. There's free yoga in the park. Our most creative event has been our Kendall Whittier After Five event. We roll out 2,400 square feet of AstroTurf and have an outdoor pop-up park in a parking lot. To really revitalize a neighborhood, you have to have people who are knowledgeable, and the Main Street program has been unbelievably important in making that happen in Kendall Whittier and in Tulsa. It's not something I knew was a thing in districts, and it's such a valuable resource. It's like having somebody help you keep in touch with everything that's going on. Ed helped us out since day one. Like he would involve us in whatever was going on in the neighborhood. The beauty of the four point approach is that it's flexible. You can tailor it to your specific needs. Our approach to the design point of the four point approach has been to really customize it towards our transformation strategy of becoming an art and cultural district. So art is really reflected everywhere in Kendall Whittier. We have our bike racks, our public art piece as well. We had three main art anchors. We had the Circle Cinema, we had Ziegler Art and Frame, and we had Tulsa Girls Art School. One of the things that makes us so unique is the preservation of the historic built environment in our city. The board at Kendall Whittier Main Street is really committed to diversity and making sure that the events that we do, the businesses that we are working with, are reflective of the neighborhood. Kendall Whittier is about 30% Hispanic. With that, we try to make sure that we're being inclusive. We do our Mercado, 
which is a multicultural artisan market. So the Mercado happens on Saturday mornings, and it's just a place where local vendors go and sell Hispanic homemade items. You know, it could be that maybe they start out at a stall at the Mercado and eventually can grow into an actual retail space. It's a good opportunity for us to establish a rapport with business owners and then be able to help them launch to the next level if that's what they're looking to do. For us, Kindle Whittier is the blueprint. We want more Kindle Whittiers in Tulsa, using that as a model. So the city council and the mayor developed a new program called the Destination Districts Program. We have bought in fully to the Main Street approach and we're bringing more Main Street to other places in the city that have experienced disinvestment over the years and we're really excited about what that's going to do for our city moving forward. It really has become a district where you can come in the morning and park your car once and you can have an entire day in Kendall Whittier and not leave. It's just an easy, laid-back atmosphere and everyone's welcome. We have realized the vision and so being a district of small, locally owned creative businesses, this is exactly what we wanted. We have the businesses, we have the people, and we have the sustainable funding. So we really just get to, at this point, take things to the next level. All right, what an inspiring transformation. Congratulations to everybody who has been part of this effort in Kendall Whittier. Uh, today we have joining us uh, Jessica Jackson C., who is the executive director of the Main Street Organization. In, uh, in Kendall Whittier. We have Ed Shar, who is the marketing director of Leadership Tulsa, but used to be with the executive director of the Kendall Whittier Main Street program. Maria Barnes, who is a board member with the Kendall Whittier Main Street, uh, Main Street program. Thank you, welcome. And Buffy Hughes, of course, who is our wonderful state coordinator from Oklahoma. Thank you all for making time to join us. Congratulations to you all again. What a, what a terrific accomplishment. Um, Jessica, I was wondering if we could start with you, and we would love to hear just a little bit about what uh, winning the award means to you and, and means to the community. Yeah, it's it's such an honor to win win this award, and it's a true testament to our entire community. You know, Main Street doesn't happen in a silo. It takes a whole village to uh, create a great Main Street. And so it's a true testament to not just our board members who have given thousands of hours of volunteer time and just a blood, sweat and tears, but our property owners, business owners, our city leadership, our state coordinating program, it just, it took everyone. And so this is truly a community award and it just means a lot that um, the, the thousands of hours and the, the money and time and effort and passion has all paid off. It's just really, heartwarming and we're really thankful. All to, all to great effect and as you say, huge collective effort. So Ed, uh, I think one of the things that we've been most excited to hear about is the way that this really has inspired other Tulsa communities to um, join the, the Main Street movement too. You wanna to tell us a little bit about how you think that came about? Well, absolutely. Um, seven, eight years ago when the Main Street program in Kendall Whittier was still in its infancy, there was one other Main Street program in Tulsa, um, in Southwest Tulsa, and you know, and it was young as well. And seeing the benefits of the Main Street model, seeing how that has really impacted the community in a positive way, and rallied people in the community, um, you know, through the uh, the facade grants that were offered, really uh, nurturing investment, all the events that have taken place. Uh, just getting people organized and excited around a strategic vision. You know, I'm, I'm really proud to say that there are now two new Main Street programs in Tulsa and there will be more in the future, I'm very confident. So, um, you know, I think that it's fair to say that Tulsa really appreciates and understands what the Main Street model can do for uh, commercial districts and for making places that are uh, for better for residents and for visitors. That's fantastic. And that's you know, that's part of the legacy of your success as well. It's not just the impact you've had on your, on your neighborhood, but the way that this has been picked up by others and, uh, and, and others are carrying the mantle forward. Um, so Maria, you've been a board member with Kendall Whittier and so we're really eager to get your perspective about the local impacts that the program has had on the neighborhood. The, the impact for, from the, for the neighborhood has been tremendous. The Main Street program, and a lot of kudos to Ed, 
and Jessica, but they never, it was always thinking outside that box. How can we make this better? And to the things that they have done, we have done to bring more business in the neighborhood. We have a bakery, restaurants, a lot of fun stuff. And as Ed mentioned, the facade grant, that's been a, a bonus to help those businesses to, to help them make it look beautiful. But when we have the After Five, the Arts Festival, all those things that we do that bring the neighborhood and the business together, it's been wonderful. I mean, there's there's just so much that Main Street has been doing, uh, just like with the coronavirus that we've been dealing with. You know, Jessica was thinking outside that box again, how we can help those businesses. And I think it's important that the neighborhood and the businesses know that we're working together and we care about each other and we're here to help each other. And so Main Street's been a big deal for us. It's that missing piece that we needed for years to help make this connection for the business in the neighborhood. So it's been, it's been tremendous. And as Ed said, there's a couple more now in Tulsa, but I wish every neighborhood could have a Main Street because this is, this is gold. This has been so good for us. Thank you, Maria. And I, I, I think those are such important words right now, the way that you all have, um, you know, that Main Street really does provide a platform for people to work collaboratively together, especially whether it's, uh, you know, revitalization more generally or in a really difficult moment like with COVID. Um, so thank you. And Buffy, let's uh, go last but not least to you. Um, share a little bit with us about why you think Kendall Whittier is so deserving of this award. Uh, they are so deserving of this board. Um, you know, Kendall Whittier knew where they were going from the beginning. They knew they wanted an arts focus. They were one of the first seven certified cultural districts designated by the Oklahoma Arts Council. You know, they went from an occupancy of 35% to 100%. Um, and it was nothing but, you know, hard work and dedication by the staff, by the board members, by the city of Tulsa, by volunteers, residents, and they were all dedicated, but they knew where they were going and they achieved their goal. It's actually, you know, been a short 10 years, but yeah, it's, it's been great. Yeah. So we're, we're very, very proud of them. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much for making time to join us today and share your reflections on what the award means to you, our party, congratulations again to you. And we are just honored to have you as part of this nationwide network and to be able to share your story of transformation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, I am pleased to present the second Great American Main Street Award in 2020 to beautiful Boyne City Main Street in Boyd City, Michigan. With a powerhouse volunteer base logging 54,000 volunteer hours in a town of just 3,700 people, Boyne City's growth has been a true community effort. Thanks to Boyne's leadership in developing successful workforce housing initiatives and strong partnerships, Boyne City has brought renewed vitality to their downtown. Boyne City is a picturesque community on Lake Charlevoix in northern Michigan. It is a small town that is very invested in itself. It's a wonderful community. Everyone knows everyone. Great place to live, great place to eat, great place to shop. It's just a great place to be. We're not afraid of taking risks, trying new things. We're unique and we're different. We're going to be Boyne City. We started in 1856. Our first permanent settlers came to this area from Ireland. They saw in the river that we have going through our town here, something that reminded them of home. And that river in Ireland was called the Boyne River. We were named after their homestead. As time went on, the lumbering industry really took over until they basically depleted all the resources that they had here. Boyne City went through some hard times. So when Main Street first got started 17 years ago, we had a downtown development authority board that had a vision for downtown but didn't know where to get started. When they decided that they were gonna apply for the Michigan Main Street program, it really wasn't about the individual agendas within the community, it was the community first and how they moved that community forward. I have watched this town change I had a night and day it's been a great transformation from the uh, remnants of an old industrial town to a wonderful family-oriented 
destination spot for Michigan. It's, it's a real jewel. I think Main Street's done a lot to help grow this town. I think one of Boyne City's strengths is our ability to incorporate change in a way that is authentic to our community, not to sell out, so to speak. In Boyne City, we've worked to find the balance between a sustainable workforce and sustainable housing. We really need both to be successful. They have really focused on their residents and making sure that they are not overpricing their residents out. We've been able to get so much done since becoming Main Street. It's allowed us to, to get where we are. In one of our parks, we have something that's called a pavilion. It's been here since the 1970s. And by be making it a year-round facility, that can benefit a lot of programs, including our farmer's market. The four-point approach with Main Street has absolutely allowed us to elevate the farmer's market. It's become an economic driver for our downtown. They're not just vendors, there's 70 additional small businesses in our downtown. Boyne City Main Street supported us greatly at the farmer's market and then with our transition through to the brick and mortar. When you look at the business mix that we have in our downtown, that was a purposeful decision and it helped set the stage for the types of businesses that we have now to grow and to thrive. We love to eat at a lot of the local restaurants. In the summertime, there's not a weekend that goes by, there's not something going on. Two of our signature events are Boing Thunder and Stroll the Streets. Stroll the Streets is a music series. We put a band on every corner of downtown. Boing Thunder involves 120 powerboats that come from across the nation. And it started with this idea, like, let's get some powerboats to come to town. It's raised over a million dollars in its lifetime. Because we became a Main Street community and people saw there was an energy, a positiveness, growth, people were willing to invest in Boynton City. It has been a strong volunteer base all along. I think it continues to grow because Main Street is about getting the community input and what they're excited about and making those things come to fruition. I volunteer because it satisfies me. Without the volunteers, none of this could happen. Even though it seems like there's a lot of things that have been accomplished, we're just getting started. And whether it's the friendliness, the food, uh, the natural environment, I think it all comes together and it's all been enhanced by the Main Street program that's really allowed us, I think, to really up our game and to thrive. Okay, well, such a dynamic community. Congratulations to you for winning the Great American Main Street Award. Um, I want to introduce our guest from Boyne City today, Kelsey King Duff, who is the executive director of the Main Street program in Boyne City. Michael Kane, who is the city manager at the city of Boyne City, and Laura Krizov, of course, who is the wonderful um, Main Street coordinator from the great state of Michigan. Thank you so much for making time to join us and talk a little bit about your experience um, with uh, Main Street revitalization in Boyne City. And uh, um, Kelsey, I wanted to talk with you and, and just hear your thoughts about what winning GAMSA means to you and, and what it means to the community. Yeah, so for our community, I think um, this is just a really good way to highlight all of the hours and hundreds and thousands of hours that um, so many volunteers, um, residents, visitors have put into making our community the, the place that it is today. Um, it really helps to, you know, validate all of the projects and things like that, that when you get started um, might seem really overwhelming or hard to kind of see the long term and what that's going to end up looking like and um, it's possible to get there and, and just how that all comes together using the Main Street framework. It also is it's going to be a really good launching point for us um, into the future and you know fortunately we've been able to count a lot of successes in our time as a Main Street community but 
this to us is really just getting started and um, a good way to highlight just all of the ways that um, Main Street has touched downtown. So hard to find where it hasn't touched downtown. Great. Well, congratulations. And I love that sentiment that this isn't the end of anything. This is really the start of uh, the next chapter. Um, Michael, can you tell us a little bit from a senior leadership perspective in the city as city manager? Um, I'm curious if you have any thoughts you'd share with uh, your fellow city managers um, or with other local elected officials about the value of having a Main Street program in your town. For Boyne City, it's been transformational. I'd only been in Boyne City a couple months when we really started considering it and the Michigan Main Street program was really reintroducing itself to Michigan. And we sent a couple of our people down to one of their initial training sessions to learn more about what this thing is that was called Main Street. And when my people came back, one of them was my uh, uh, planning director. And I, I've told this story many times is he recommended that we not do it. That it was too much work, it would be too busy, and uh, we, just, we just couldn't do it. We, it, was a, it was a bridge too far for us. And that is the best decision a recommendation that I never followed because, because it was all those things. It was hard, but it opened up so many doors for us. And it really, the community uh, has believed in the Main Street process, the four point approach, and really incorporated in everything that we do as a community, not just in our downtown core historic area, but throughout. We've had buildings, historic buildings that were saved because we became a Main Street community. Oh, thank you, Michael. We're glad to hear worth, worth the effort. Um, Definitely. Laura, I saw you smiling uh, as, as Michael was talking. Um, what, what do you most want people to know about Boyne City's work? Um, I think first and foremost is they are our longest standing program with us for 17 years. They've been with us from the very beginning. Um, and I think that you know, any pilot program that we put out there, they are always eager to be a part of. Um, I think one thing for Boyne City from my perspective is that they're always pushing us. They don't just settle for where they're at. They always want to try to do better and they push us to think outside the box, come up with creative services and things um, to really help them move forward. And I think that the partnerships that they have within Boyne City um, have really helped to make a difference in what Boyne is today. And just really excited to see how they have been able um, over the last 17 years become what they are today. Yeah, thank you, Laura. It's really that growth mindset, right? Where you're, I uh, always keep learning, always keep taking that next step. All right, well, before we wrap up, Kelsey and Michael, you have your Great American Main Street Award t-shirts. You wanna show those to the camera? Oh, yeah. Laura, I hear yours is in the mail, right? <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much. Congratulations. Oh, very nice, very nice. And the plan. <laughs> we are just, you know, honored and, and so thrilled to have you as part of the network and to be able to share your story with everyone. Well, thank you very much. We're very appreciative and humbled. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, our third winner of the Great American Main Street Award in 2020 is Downtown Tupelo Main Street Association in Tupelo, Mississippi. Downtown Tupelo is built on its legacy as the home of Elvis Presley and transformed its Main Street from a corridor that is shut down after 5 p.m. to a lively bustling downtown. A three-time Gamza semifinalist, Tupelo has made impressive strides thanks to a transformational streetscape project to expand downtown inclusive community events, and strong business development. People will probably, of course, associate Tupelo with Elvis. But you know, it's also just a great community to live in. I love the spirit of downtown. We collaborate, we work together. There's something for everyone. We're still a new frontier. Things are happening every day. It has just been like a renaissance downtown. What makes Tupelo such a good example of uh, a Main Street program is that they really haven't put all their eggs in one of the baskets. They spread the love, so to speak, and they've excelled in, in all of the areas. We 
are an example of the most progressive town in Mississippi. Tupelo has a very rich history of being inclusive, being unified. Today, for example, there's around a thousand people in Fair Park for a second annual Pride event. I have put a lot of emphasis on unity and diversity in our city. Well, I have started Communities Forward Festival to bring about a better relationship with the community and the police. With Main Street being an organization that's trying to help promote participation, that it would be good if we join forth. We're a more modern city. We really were founded after the Civil War. Unfortunately, we had one of the deadliest, most devastating tornadoes in the history of the country came through Tupelo in the late 1930s and destroyed a lot of the historic buildings that we had. 40, 50 blocks, they were destroyed. There really wasn't a Main Street here. We just didn't come downtown. I think you went to the mall. That was, you know, what people did. We wanted to make it more of a lifestyle center, more of a neighborhood. We understand that if we want a better city, we're going to roll up our sleeves and we're going to do it ourselves. Tupelo is fortunate to have a couple of really long-standing established businesses like Tupelo Hardware and Reed's Department Store, but again, focusing on trying to create a good, vibrant mix of businesses, of different types of businesses that make Tupelo kind of an around-the-clock destination. I wanted to create an experience where people could create beautiful things and collaborate with other local artists. The Main Street approach was instrumental in us finding a space, the promotion of the space, and Main Street holds your hand and walks you through the whole process. Just in the last 10 years, we've had 83 new businesses open. That has brought about 1,300 new jobs to downtown. We have yoga studios, new clothing stores. We have restaurants. We have live music. I'd say now is our, our heyday. I mean, we've really got young people coming back. You have a lot of pedestrian traffic. You've got bicycle traffic. You know, that's something that to me is exciting to see people experience downtown. Just Main Street alone does 14 events a year. The Chili Fest, which is a lot of fun, good food and, and music. If you live in Tupelo, you know about Elvis Festival. About 100,000 people come to Tupelo because of Elvis Presley. The town itself is the destination, not just an event. The Main Street Association here has been so successful at building those public-private partnerships with the city of Tupelo. That four-point approach has just been a driver for everything they've done. You see that success in projects like Fair Park and the Streetscape Improvement Project. You know, we all say at Fair Park, it's, you know, Tupelo's front porch. And that's so true because people just want to have their events there. They want to be there. For the last 20 years, we've had very intentional efforts to revitalize downtown. I'm looking forward to just even more people being and enjoying the downtown. I think downtown Tupelo will continue to be a leader in the community and will continue to be an economic driver. I think Tupelo has a great future ahead of it, uh, all guided by that Main Street approach. That Tupelo spirit, it's, no one can say that we're this small town that's not important. We're going to make Tupelo good for every citizen. There's always, always something to look forward to and always something to work toward. What an impressive turnaround. Congratulations to each and every one of you joining us from Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, what an accomplishment. I want to introduce, we have four guests with us today. Uh, we're going to start with Debbie Branchenberg, who is the executive director of the downtown Tupelo Main Street Association. Thank you, Debbie, for joining us. Thomas Gregory, who is the extraordinary Main Street coordinator from the state of Mississippi, and I will add an absolutely outstanding advocate. He's been a huge part of our congressional advocacy efforts uh, this, this past um, summer and into the fall. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Nettie Davis, who has been uh, on the uh, council for, for quite some time, I understand, and a big part of the Tupelo downtown revitalization effort. And then, of course, Mayor Jason Shelton from the city of Tupelo is joining us as well. Thank you so much. Uh, Debbie, I want to start with you. You have made your career at Main Street in Tupelo. 30 years you've been with the organization. Um, and we want to know, what does is, what is winning this award mean to you? Well, Thank you. It is such a wonderful day here in Tupelo, and I want to first thank 
you, Patrice, and the National Main Street Center, and all the judges who chose Tupelo. This is the third time, so third time's the charm. And as a semifinalist, and for us to be one of the three chosen on the 40th anniversary of Main Street is a great American Main Street Award winner. It's been a goal of mine my entire career since 1995 when the, the awards first started to have Tupelo designated as a games a winner. But it's not about me. It's about our community. It's about our partners, our volunteers, all of the people who have worked tirelessly with a vision to become reality. You know, here in Tupelo, we don't have a university, we don't have a river, we don't have a beach or a mountain. And so we make our own fun and we see an opportunity and we dive in and we make it happen. And so we always like to quote Elvis as our, he's our hometown son as saying, you know, do something worth remembering. And I think Tupelo does that every day. Oh, I love that, Debbie. And I just, I feel like that's such a relatable message for so many communities that they don't have, you know, the one single asset that kind of helps them make it. And, uh, and, and so that's why Tupelo is such a terrific example of how you make your own fun, how you make your own revitalization success story. Um, Thomas, I want to go to you and tell us a little bit about, from your perspective at the state level, what makes Tupelo such a, str a strong program? Well, really, I think there are two main reasons for Tupelo's success as a Main Street program. Uh, first of all, downtown Tupelo Main Street has strong support from the local community, as you see here today. Everyone from the mayor to the city council to the downtown business owners understands what downtown Tupelo Main Street is about, and they support the organization both financially and with their volunteer efforts. Uh, and secondly, and I, I think this may seem simple, but Tupelo's strength comes from its long-term commitment to implementing the Main Street approach. They really pay attention to each of the four points, and honestly, uh, you see that in their program of work. Their marketing efforts, their festivals and events, their preservation projects, and their success at building a strong business community in their downtown, downtown all stems from their dedication to the Main Street approach. Uh, you know, Tupelo has long been a leader among Mississippi's Main Street communities, and we are just thrilled that they are now being recognized as a leader on the national stage. Well, thank you, Thomas. And I think that message about a commitment to comprehensive revitalization and, and a commitment to incremental change, right? It's been, it, it, it doesn't happen overnight. It, it does take a sustained long-term effort. So thank you. All right, well, Councilwoman Davis, it was uh, wonderful learning about your work with the, with the city of Tupelo. And I'm curious how you think the Main Street program has impacted uh, Tupelo as a community. Incidentally, yes, downtown Tupelo is in my ward. Ward four, and uh, I'm just crazy about the things that downtown Tupelo do, and I work very hard to get other people in my community to take part in downtown Tupelo and realize that downtown belongs to all of the citizens. Uh, it's just a really great experience uh, being on the city council and being able to come up with programs and ideas that were help our city. The revitalization has just been excellent. Uh, we have been able to get uh, be praised by people from all over the state for what we do in our city. And so to me, Tupelo has a uh, set a great example for others to follow. And I'm just really proud of the, what the downtown Tupelo is doing and will continue to do. Oh, Councilwoman, thank you so much. Um, I, I, I really deeply, <clears throat> all of us are, are so appreciative of your leadership and your commitment to making downtown Tupelo a place for everyone. Um, and I hope that this, effort, this, this award helps um, give you a sense of the of accomplishment in, in um, achieving that goal. So thank you for joining us and, and being part of the effort. Um, Mayor Shelton, I want to uh, wrap up with you. Um, I hope you're incredibly proud of the downtown efforts and what is uh, what does this award mean to you and, and to the city? This is absolutely huge. It's uh, such an honor uh, to be recognized the you know the top award on a national uh, level. I mean it, it's just um, it's an amazing thing for the city of Tupelo. 
uh, Debbie uh, Brangenberg has just done a fantastic job uh, downtown uh, Tupelo. We're so very fortunate to have her, so very proud of her. Uh, you know, we, this, is, this is something that uh, will distinguish the city of Tupelo. You know, the, the decades of hard work that have gone into this, you know, in, in Nashville, you know, sometimes folks go up there and work 20 years to become an overnight sensation. Uh, what we've seen in the city of Tupelo is uh, for the last 30 years, a uh, concerted effort to revitalize and enhance downtown Tupelo. And uh, right now we're in a, a construction boom, uh, both residential and commercial. And we see that, uh, see the benefits of 30 years of hard work paying off uh, literally on every block in downtown Tupelo. And uh, to be uh, recognized as the uh, the Games Award winner is just huge for the city of Tupelo. Thank you uh, to to everybody with the, the Main Street organization for uh, for recognizing uh, the efforts here in the city of Tupelo. As Elvis would say, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a great, great way to wrap up anything. Thank you so much, Mayor. And thank you to each and every one of you for joining us. Congratulations again and on your accomplishments, your long-term commitments to the transformation of your downtown. We at Main Street America are absolutely honored to have you as part of the network and, and really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Well, congratulations to this year's Great American Main Street Award winners. Again, we hope you are so proud of your accomplishments and congratulations also to the semifinalists for the GAMSA Award. Uh, next, I want to turn to another, uh, another part of our afternoon together, and that is uh, introducing you to Mary Means. Mary Means is the founder of the Main Street Movement. Um, the reason that we are standing here today, that we are together, assembled, uh, even virtually, is because of all of Mary's very hard work. And so it's a real honor for me to get to introduce you to uh, someone I've come to think of as a mentor over the last seven, eight years I've been with Main Street America. Um, now, Main Street was just an idea in Mary's mind in the uh, mid to late 1970s when she saw the way that America's downtowns were hollowing out and that there were these um, really special resources that were just being lost. Since she, she founded Main Street, Mary went on to do many other things as a practitioner, a teacher, and a mentor in the community revitalization field. Uh, and so it's an honor. We're going to hear her remarks today. I think some reflections on the past and also looking ahead. I'm really looking forward to those. Uh, and then Mary is going to help us present the very first Mary Means Leadership Award. Because if there's one thing we know, it's that great Main Streets don't just happen. Great Main Streets require leadership. And so uh, we think it is high time that we're offering an award in Mary's name that really celebrates the leadership achievements of our network members. And we're gonna do that for the very first time today. So with that, Mary, I am gonna hand the floor over to you and thank you so much for being here. Uh, and thank you for everything you have done to get us to the Main Street movement that we have today. Thanks, Patrice. It's great to be with you and all the Main Streeters and historic preservation fans out there. Um, today, I really wanted to reflect on the 40 years that's passed since we first began all this. That means I need to take you back a long, long time until, well, even before the internet and Google. It was the 1970s, and my job with the National Trust was to foster the growth of preservation in the Midwest to start organizations going. I traveled around my 10 states meeting advocates and skeptics, and there were a lot of them. That included just about anyone in power. I discovered in the process of it that while there were fine architectural landmarks all over, the most striking and neglected historic resource was the town center, it's Main Street. There, the whole of it with its 19th and early 20th century buildings was much more than its parts, yet it was so familiar to people and its deterioration had been so gradual that it was really taken for granted. As was the migration out, business was moving to highways and to shopping centers. It was leaving downtown pretty decimated. The pattern was widespread. Fine buildings, they were often covered in modernized slipcovers, were at risk 
and their value was not being recognized. Preservation was an alien idea. It was suitable, I was told, for places that were really historic, like Boston or Savannah, but these were just old buildings. The reason I opened with the pre-internet information was because it was so hard to come by finding out what was going on anywhere else. One couldn't just ask the Google, how do I bring my town center back? This was also a time when adaptive reuse had not become common. In fact, there were very few examples to point to. There were only two of us in the office for the Midwest and very few local preservation organizations. So we weren't gonna make any headway if we couldn't address a couple of really related issues. And they were, first of all, we were losing town centers. They were being left behind as relics. If we were gonna make preservation work, we were gonna to have to find ways for communities to save them, to bring them back to life. Second, advocates for preservation were passionate, but seldom in power. Those who were in power were the best, at best, they were skeptical about preservation. They viewed us as seeing the world through kind of a curatorial eye, seeking architectural perfection. And that was expensive. We had to make believers, and the best way to do that was to make preservation matter to them. Who were those in power? They were largely business people, men, as a matter of fact. If we could make preservation work downtown, we could address both of these overarching issues. So, with the naivete of youth, we set out to do this. We proposed the Main Street Project. The National Endowment for the Arts believed in us and awarded us $50,000, their largest, their maximum. Sometimes I think it was probably the most highly leveraged grant they ever gave. Uh, and a benevolent manufacturer of building materials put up the rest paying for this three-year experiment. We would work with three towns to learn what worked, then we'd hold conferences, write a book, make a movie, and we would do all of this in three years. And we would document it so we could prove, as our tagline rashly said, you can have economic development within the context of historic preservation. It worked. These are the three towns. Many people know the story. We learned a lot and we captured it as the four point Main Street approach to simplify it. One of the things we really learned was the vital importance of having a skilled, energetic person as the savvy Main Street manager. And we learned the power of story or vision, if you will. The common wisdom at the time was that downtown was just head out, downtown's dead. Spoken or not, this was a voice in towns and cities across the country. It has been said that the Main Street Project brought a new narrative. No, it isn't. It's the heart of your community and you can do something about it. So from the get-go, the, even as we were getting it off the ground the first year, the media just jumped on it. After all, it was kind of a natural David and Goliath story. The film Main Street came out in 1979 and became a rotary and Kiwanis lunchtime hit. Soon hundreds of towns were calling and writing letters to the National Trust, no email yet. The National Trust had never seen anything like it. Nothing it had done had ever gained so much traction and it was happening well beyond the Midwest. So, Instead of riding off into the sunset at the end of three years, we managed to attract the funding to take the Main Street approach to scale, trying it out in six states, each of them with five towns. Thus was born the National Main Street Center. The hope was that states would be the platform of networks of strong Main Street towns. And as you know, they are today. Over the next two, last two years, I've been thinking a lot about all this came to be, how it worked, why it worked, why it spread, and how it's endured for 40 years. I'd left the world of Main Street in the mid 80s and had been running a small but mighty planning practice. When I returned to find out what happened, 
I was absolutely blown away by the spread and by the economic impact. It was awesome. It's a story that has flown under the radar of mainstream economists and preservationists. So I decided to write a book about it. I called it Main Street Comeback. But as I was finishing it, the pandemic changed everything, including the book. It's now titled Main Street's Comeback and How It Can Come Back Again, and will be published in about a month. The damage of the pandemic is profound. Beyond the tragic and rising death toll, it is truly an existential crisis, nowhere more so than on Main Street. Those of you who have worked so hard there for so long know this well. But most Main Streets have weathered existential crises before. Think of the Great Depression's bread lines passing boarded up stores. Think of the flight to the suburbs and to regional shopping centers. Main Streets even survived so far the mighty Amazon. And unlike 40 years ago, they have two things going for them today. The buildings are in much better condition than they were 40 years ago. And most of all, there are now skilled, dedicated Main Street organizations all over the country. These vital nodes of leadership embody years of experience working together and building trust. Together, Main Street's 1,600 towns and 39 states are an invisible system for recovery. It's time to lift it up and make it visible. This is the resilient network that is poised for regeneration. You are regenerators, you Main Street folk. This is the resilient network that is poised to bring it all back. The regenerator is the term that was coined by economist Bruce Katz, formerly of Brookings, to name the vital engine of recovery. Keeping the web together and strengthening it is the purpose of the legislation Patrice and many of you have been pushing for. Why? Because as Katz puts it, the notion that a quick revival of main streets will be driven by millions of individual small businesses acting on their own defies the laws of finance. He and we know that recovery is inextricably linked to the recovery of these places, not just small businesses. The vital ingredient for both is the presence of these regenerators. And many of these vital institutions are themselves in financial trouble. Thus the critical need for federal funding to keep the regeneration web together. The leaders among you are already actively building a groundswell of support at all levels. Everyone needs to get involved. We live in a fractured, divided nation right now. Main Street is nonpartisan. It belongs to everybody. It takes inspired leadership to keep it that way, to enable it to remain the heart and soul of the whole community. There are states that have lost their Main Street programs to changes in administrations. Those that have endured have weathered the storms of regime change. Texas and North Carolina are outstanding examples. Both have been in the Main Street network since its inception 40 years ago. Some say Texas's magic ingredient was Annis Reed, the force of nature who headed the state program for its first 16 years. Annis cooked up the first lady's visit, inviting the wife of the governor to tour new Main Street communities and congratulate them. They loved it from the start and passed it on to the next first lady. It's the best part of the job, they said. Legislators knew it too. Main Street is now nearly as sacred in Texas as Friday night football. North Carolina is similar. It's also been in since 1980, since it was named one of the first Main Street states. North Carolina is a purple state, moving from one party to the other, sometimes electing a Republican governor, other times a Democratic, sometimes the legislative houses are controlled by the opposite party, you get the picture. Throughout it all, Main Street has stayed in place. Had Main Street been identified as a Republican initiative or a Democratic initiative, it's likely that the program would have died. Instead, in good economic years, 
there are when there are ample funds in the state coffers, Main Street has often been awarded additional funds. It's taken savvy leadership to navigate through these political waters successfully year after year. And now to today's award. It's really humbling to have an award named for you, especially didn't, since it didn't require that I endow it. Patrice invited me to be on the jury for the first winner of the Mary Means Award. It was a tough choice for our jury. There were some 40 nominations of local Main Street managers. Some had produced commendable, impressive results in a sh the short time they'd been in their town. Others had a long track record of accomplishments over many, many years. In all cases, their communities were the better for their having been there. In the end, however, the jury was unanimous in selecting Sharon Jabonski of Morganton, North Carolina. Through several cycles of mayors and councils, through good and bad economic times, Sharon's steady hand has been there, making believers out of skeptics, encouraging Morganton's business and civic leaders to continue investing time, treasure, and sweat, and in so doing, turn the tired center of a former textile mill town into one of the most vibrant and attractive main streets in the whole galaxy of them. And as great leaders do, Sharon has generously coached and mentored many newer Main Streeters throughout the state and throughout the national network. It gives me great joy to present the first Mary Means Leadership Award to Sharon Jablonski. Hi, Sharon, congratulations. Thank you, Mary. It, I'm just amazed to hear uh, that story again. It is um, unbelievable. And I guess I didn't realize just all that you had done. Uh, my hat's off because I find it hard to take care of one town and, <laughs> and manage to take care of three. So um, thank you. Well, if it will uh, help everyone out there who's trying to cope with the pandemic, someone said the other day after I finished one of these presentations, well, if they were able to do all of that before the internet, we can certainly make it work today. That's very so, true. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Tell me what you, in all your time there, what you're most proud of. So in over 30 years, you can imagine I've probably had as many failures as I've had successes. And, you know, you, you tend to point to the big boys, which is putting in a multiplex uh, cinema, seven screen cinema, uh, putting in a downtown hotel, seeing that the city hall's put up, you know, all great things. But I'm gonna tell you, Mary, still to this day, the most proud is being able to put all these young, new entrepreneurs into business and finally figuring out a better way for them to be sustainable. And, and that, that's what keeps me going. That is really wonderful. And it's a good thing it does because there's gonna be a lot of work in that line coming up. Thank you all for the amazing work you're doing. Thank you, Mary, we appreciate it. And thank you to the National Main Street Program. It's, it's awesome. Congratulations again, Sharon, and thank you, Mary, for those words of wisdom, actually words of wisdom from both of you um, that I think is you know, just such valuable message to share with the Main Street America Network right now. Uh, and thank you again so much for joining us and have a wonderful rest of the afternoon.